God. Thank you. Oh, my God. My God. Oh, Jesus. Yes. Aretha Franklin said it best. Don't take it out of context. You know me. I go out draw from any source. Gotta find me an angel. Yes. To fly away. Yes. Thank you, Lord God. Your angels often present. Yes. The messenger that God was sent to help get you out and help bring you. Because you have got a certain image in your mind of what you think God ought to be and who you look like. You walk away from your message, your angel. Yes. That God sends to help you. Amen. Ah. I done walked away from a quite a few times. Yes. Jesus Christ. No exceptions. It took me a while to figure this out. Thank you, Lord. I walked away from quite a few messages. And I realized looking back was God. Thank you, Lord. God. That's what it the power of growing older in grace. Yes, 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 yes. You learn to calculate situations differently. Yes. Your anticipation and expectation. Yes. Faith yes. that God can do anything. Yes. You finally get to a place that you finally say, any way you bless me. Hey! Ah. Yes! Hey. Go ahead. Do it. Yes. Go ahead. Yes. Use them. Use them. Yes. Use somebody. Yes. Any way you bless. Yes. Thank you. Yes, Lord. Hmm. Mm. Uh, Jesus. You get in enough trouble, I guarantee you. <laughs> 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 yeah, God, I don't care who you are. Okay. You know, you somebody. Come on, man. Help me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jesus. First John 5 and 20 says, and we know that the Son of God has given, has come and has given to us an understanding that we may know him who is true. So he gave us an understanding. And that's what I'm talking about, that having an understanding of what it means knowing him and rest upon current information, your experience, your life. understand that we may know him who is true, that we are in him who is true. But John said, have an understanding and know that we are in him. And of quite naturally from the other scriptures we read that he is also in us. So it's mutual. It's not one-sided. Do you know him? The last section. So let's ask the question. Do you know Jesus? Not the one now that we read about alone. But it seemed like even the disciples had problems recognizing the post-resurrected Savior. Not the pre cavalry Savior. Because mm -hmm. obviously something had changed. We read so much about the pre cavalry Savior mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as if we're still in pre cavalry times. Yeah, come on. Come on. Fix it. Come on. <laughs> The pre cavalry Savior had limitations. As an incarnate, he is still subject to the conditions of the flesh and body, and thus he cried and felt the pain, sorrow, mm -hmm. like we all do. That's the pre. He could just be in one place at one time. That's the pre cavalry. He had not yet defeated the devil in death and so forth. That's the pre-cavalry. 
That's what Calvary is all about. Mm -hmm. But post Calvary, post resurrection, is the one that said, All power now all power. is in my hand. Yes. All right. He didn't say that pre Calvary. He said that post resurrection. Yes. That's the one that said, I'm going to be with you. Yes. Always. Hmm. So this is the one that I'm proposing that you become more acquainted with. The all-saving, post-resurrected Savior. Because there's something different now. He's defeated yes. death. He is all powerful. That's really the saving graces of God through which is spread abroad upon our hearts today. So that's the one, the post resurrected Savior is the one that can appear in many forms. Uh -huh. Listen to the Because obviously he appeared in one form to the, the men on the road to Emmaus. In the resurrection morning, when Mary was standing there weeping, and he said, well, what, what's wrong? And she said, they've taken my Lord, I don't know. And one account says she turned and looked at him thinking that he was a gardener who come to attend to the ground yes. until he said to her, it is I. Then recognizing his voice, yes. she went to grab him. He said, don't touch me yet. I have not yet ascended to my father. But go meet the disciples and tell him, yes. come on out of the room. Yes. That I'm still alive. That's the, the post resurrected yes. is the one that can appear in many forms. And what I'm trying to tell you that he appears to you according to origin over and over. And sometimes he comes through the vehicles and bodies of men who become yes. the messenger. Yes. And the vehicle through which he's going to help you get out of what you mean. Yes. Yes. Many forms. Woo. Be it through some angelic figure, through a dream through a vision or through an individual yes. or group of people. He can come in many forms and many ways. Yes. Right. That's the post resurrection. Yes. That's the one. We, do you know that? Yes. Yes. All right. Yes. Number two. We've all talked about this. What about the still small voice? When there is no form. Come on now. Come on. That's the one that the prophet Elijah talked about when he was looking for God in the dramatic. In the fire that fell, and yes. the storm, and the earthquake, he wanted a dramatic scene, and he kept saying, surely God is this, but in the quietness of his spirit, yes. he hears a still small voice. That was God. What about when there is no form? Do you still know that it is God who's talking? What Revelation says, the one that stands and knocks. John 16, the Spirit of God who searches the heart, who teaches and guides and empowers and brings things to your members and guides you into all truth. Sometimes that's, 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 that's God. Giving us current knowledge about who he is. I taught this many years ago. Not just here, maybe here once or twice. But when I was on the field, that the great, one of the great fallacies of the church, I'll make this point and I'll move to my last point was that we have the Old Testament, we have the New Testament. And when the New Testament ends, we close the book as the final account. And have not recognized that a testament is still being written. It's the testimony of your life. Because the scripture says all your accounts are being written in heaven. So while you have the old, you have the new, you have what I call the living testament. Come on. Yes. 
which is the account of everybody's lives. Yes. Thank you, Lord God. Amen. Let me go here. This was in my message initially planned for the day. I'll give it this part. <coughs> but the account of your life, listen to me, as it says in Revelation that you're going to stand before God and the books will be open, which is the story of your life. Can I share something with you? Take it or leave it. God is not judging you by this. This is what he's going to use to judge the devil. Come on! Come on, Come on. See, we've been teaching it like God is going to judge us by what's written. Yes. That's why we're afraid because yes. we think we're not going to measure. Mm -hmm. The account of your life is not for you to be judged. Yes. Come on now. God will oh. use this yes. <laughs> to judge the whole kingdom of God. Yes. Yes. Whoa. Well, God is judging him not what he did to Jesus, not what he did to uh, Adam or anybody else. He's going to be judged by what he did to you. Mm -hmm. Every tear that you dry, Come on, somebody is writing what it means. Come on, man. And somebody going to pay for it, yeah. the pain that he caused you. Yeah. So judgment is not for you. Judgment is your life being put out there as evidence yeah. what God is going to bring to the one that caused you pain. Wow. Lift your hand and say thank you. Thank so don't be afraid of judgment no more. Because the judgment is not for you. It's for those that have brought so much pain into your life. Wow. Namely, the kingdom of darkness. And your tears are going to be the testimony that God will use. To say, you are judged for what you did to my children, the seed of righteousness. Not even what you did to me. What you did to them. Say, thank you. Thank you, Lord. That's why it's important for you to know. We is the still small boys. Let's close here. The question was, do you know the post was director savior? Do you know the still small voice? Now here comes it all the way brings home. What about the Christ who lives in your heart? I know you know the man up on the in the books that we read about, but what about the one that lives in your heart? Yes. They burned up all of the Bible and took all of the Bibles away. It wouldn't affect me none. Come on, man. Come on. Amen. They banned Bible reading everything else. It wouldn't affect me. Not at all. Ah. Come on. Ah. Come on. Yes. It wouldn't change nothing about me. Come on now. Because you can destroy this physical thing. Yes. But you can't destroy the word that's yes. written yes. on it. That's right. My God. You can dilute and pollute yes. the image and create false images of yes. who the Messiah is. Yes. That don't change nothing on, because now. I know him in my heart. Yes. Personally. I have my own record. Yes. I have my own image. Yes. Joel said it best. My, my witness is in heaven and my yes. record is on high. Yes. Thank you, Lord. See, that's, that, that's the one that walks with you and talks to you. The song says, tell you that you are his own. That's the one that promised to never leave you and always be there. The scripture says in six trials and even in seven, he will no wise forsake you. Hallelujah. Where you can even be cast down but not destroyed because, because of his eternal presence. Do you know the one that lives in your heart? We're serving a living Savior, and the greatest proof of his life is what he's doing for you, mm -hmm. to you, mm -hmm. in you. Mm -hmm. If you need to find him, you don't have to go very far. No, no. Touch your body and say, just look deep within your heart, and you'll find God there. That's been given unto us. Yes. Conscience and all. Yes. Will. Oh, yes. Look deep in your heart. Yes, my Lord. 
That's the problem. We're looking for something out there. Mm. When right he here. is right said, here. he's in right here. here. Right here. So the next time you bow your head and close your eyes, understand it's not a sign of defeat. It's a meditative spirit that I'm getting in tune with the one, the Savior on the inside, because if I can touch him, thank you, Lord God. My heart will be open to light and brightening and righteousness. Just look deep. Oftentimes we say this is a posture of defeat. It's not a posture of defeat. It's a sign of meditation that I'm not going to be distracted by what I see. I'm going to close my eyes and meditate and go deep within because I know in me that God sits on the throne of my heart. And when I call him, he is near. He is a righteous Savior. Blessed be the rock. And when I can't go nowhere else, I go to the rock that is higher and mightier than I. Clap your hands for the Lord. Glory.